how are we doing folks welcome back to another episode we are here at this fantastic 17th century building behind me which is moot hall in elstow the county of bedfordshire um, I'm here tonight with, uh, with, I like to dub them my uh, Hertfordshire Boo Crew, even though Steve's from Rotherham there, but I'm with Steve and Diane and another chap called Tony who was responsible for the fantastic pictures that we got at, uh, at Cold Christmas Church, uh, the drone footage. Um, so he's come with us tonight as well and the four of us are going to investigate this place. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting in there so I'm not going to babble on too much. Um, so needless to say, the narrator might tell you something about this. I'll see you in a bit, inside. ta -da. When we were last here, in early December 2021, Diane caught something interesting on her digital camera. I'm not saying it's paranormal, I'm just saying it's interesting. Here's how it happened. She placed her camera on the end of the long table facing the stairs and took a few stills. After she got home, this dark shape was seen. The dark shape would have been approximately here, circled in red where the flowers are. The flowers were removed before we started the investigation. Here we have two photos which were enhanced with brightness and contrast only. The shape appears to be human. But in all honesty, it could be anything. Let me know what you think in the comments please. Welcome back my friends to Moot Hall. Part 3. Right, how are you doing folks? Welcome back to Moot Hall. Um, I am here with uh, with these three fabulous people. Uh, we've got, you, you know Steve, and you know Diane, and you've obviously seen Tony once before on my, uh, my um, trip to Cold Christmas. He was, um, as I said at the top of the video, he was the gentleman who was responsible for the fantastic shots we got of that, uh, that church with these, um, uh, with these uh, drone footage. But tonight, we're going to try and get something here at Moot Hall. Um, we, uh, we don't think it's been that active yet, though, have we? No. Clive well, no, we debunked, we debunked uh, the initial noise. <laughs> yes, we had a bit of an initial noise going on that we couldn't actually find. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately it was coming from Steve's bag. Craig Maloney, that was your fault, it was your gadget. <laughs> but uh, no, we eventually found it, but uh, all is well. And uh, we're going to go lights out in a moment and start this investigation. So we'll see you in a bit. All right then folks, we've got a few gadgets kicking about the place. Um, Tony was coming with stuff, he's got his, his camera set up as well, so we've got a secondary camera here today, which is fantastic. Steve's got another camera as well, he's got his own camera downstairs pointing at the door, which allegedly has been opened, uh, the, the metal latch in there has been opened a couple of times by this, um, by this entity or this, uh, this, this energy who goes by the name of Thomas, so the, uh, so the uh, creator, uh, curator tells us. Uh, so. We'd uh, very much like to, uh, to hear that door because it does creak as soon as you actually open it, and it is on the snack at the moment. So, if that uh, if that energy is able to move that latch and make that door open, that would be uh, that would be phenomenal, and we would probably hear it as well. So, uh, as as we were here before, I'd like to I'd like to think that if there are any energies or spirits in this building here present, then. They may know us, they may, they may recognise us, if they're able to. Um, obviously we've come, we come with, the, with the utmost of respect. Um, the utmost of respect. Um, the utmost of respect. Um, and we'd really like to actually make some kind of um, intelligent contact with, uh, with any kind of spirits. You didn't just hear that? I did hear something. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm not too sure if it came from outside or not. I did hear that. Hopefully, we'll, that the, uh, the camera will have picked it up. But I'll start gas bagging. And then, um, hopefully, we'll be able to hear something. If there's anyone here, you are more than welcome to come around us. Thomas, are you here? Would you like to come forward and speak with us? Thomas, are you here? Would you like to come forward and speak with us? Thomas, are you here? Would you like to come forward and speak with us? You can even go and stand by one of the cameras, one of these talk things here or over here, and speak to that. Or there's things on the table here. You see the little red light, you come up and speak to that. We'll be able to hear you. There's also a cross at one end of the table. It's a pretty cross. It's got a purple stone in it. Would you like to move it for us? You might be able to see it from the camera's point of view, but the uh, the floor is uh, is like an arch. If you look at it like you know accentuated, it would look like that. But um, to do with where they used to spring the uh, spring the, uh, the beams to actually take the uh, the weight. Um, this upstairs probably would have been because this was a marketplace. It would have been used as storage, I would imagine. This would be. At one time, this was used as a courthouse. Right. Okay. Now we will. <laughs> so, if anyone trading had tried to trick anyone by um, not giving them the right money or using false coinage. Mm. Um, they would be brought up here to be tried. This next clip may seem straightforward, and you may wonder why I'm trying to explain it. But just a second before Diane gets up, you hear a male voice clearly say something like, I'm gonna. What I'm trying to say is, I don't think those words came out of Steve's or Tony's mouth, and it definitely did not come out of mine. Her lips are not moving. It's a strange one to call. Let me know what you think in the comments, please. I'm going to go stand in that corner. Because, you know, that's where we've stood the last time we've got the activity. So I'm going to go stand over here. You know, that's where we've stood the last time we've got the activity. So I'm going to go stand over here. You know, that's where we've stood the last time we've got the activity. Can you move something? We've got some things there in the candle. Well, it's not really a chandelier, is it? But it's like a candle thing. There's a cross at one end of the table. There's those lovely little balls hanging up. If you can make them move. Can you touch one of us, maybe? Can you... Now that floor felt like it, it vibrated then, it's sort of like, like something moved through it. Thomas, if you're here, can you just touch one of us maybe? You see the two men sitting by the table, go up and tuck their hair maybe. Can you do that? Let us know that you're here. Or this man here with the funny hat on his head, <laughs> fisherman. Can you go and poke him in the back? Can you do that? I tell you what would be absolutely amazing. Downstairs by the door, you know there's a torch and you turn that on. There's also a bell I've put there. Could you ring it for me? Do you think you could go and do that because you think you could ring it really hard or even just knock it on the floor so it makes a noise? Or if not, Thomas, if there's another bee in here, could you do that for us? I think there's a lady around here. It's a lady that likes to sing, isn't there? Well, 
you certainly been humming, haven't you? Yeah. You humming a tune? Could you do it louder for us so we can hear you? We'd love to hear you. You don't have to be shy to come forward. We don't mean you any harm. We'd just like to know that you are in this building with us tonight. We know quite a lot of people must come through here asking the same questions. And we don't want to be rude or disrespectful. But it would please us immensely if somehow you could let us know that you were here. Yeah, if there's anyone here that wants to come and say hello to us, my name is Tony. This is Steve, there's Diane over there, and Mark with the camera. If you want to just say hello, we've got devices that can pick up your voice. And when we play it back later, we can hear you, so we'd be grateful for that. That's quite a loud noise, wasn't it? Mm. Was that, I don't think that was all creaking, was it? That was... It sounded actually sounded like the bed. And I've got, there's a device near the bed. I can just say see it actually. I can just say pick it up on camera as well. Um, Steve's K2 um, is over there. If you want to um, go and set it off, if you go towards the green light, um, you know, don't worry, it, uh, it, it, uh, it will not harm you. So all, all it will do will, See if you can set that green light and you can make it go to yellow or even higher if you'd like to. Use our energy. Yeah, I'll give you my permission to use our energy or my energy. Take a little bit from me and go and move that, um, that device with the green light, please. This floor makes noise really easy. Maybe you could stomp on it. So we could hear your feet moving around. Do you let me tap, tap, tap? I don't think it was anything, but it just moved that tap. Yeah. Tap. Almost like a running tap, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Is that you trying to make noises by the building creaking? Can you do that again for us? Can you let us know that you're here? Did you hear that? Yeah. What was that? That was definitely in the corner by the bed. Yeah. Mm, it was like a... Mm. If you can manifest in a ball of light, mm. could you do that for us? Could you do that now? Could you show yourself? Is that an easy way for you to show, your, show us you're here? Show yourself in a ball of light. be fantastic if you could do that. Would you like someone else to come and sit here? You made a nice for Steve earlier when he came up on his own. Shall I get Steve to come sit over here and I'll go sit over there? Let's start. Thanks, Steve. I know it's probably really difficult and maybe you are trying your hardest to 
try and communicate with us. Maybe it's not working. But don't give up. Keep trying. We're here for a little while longer yet, so just give it your best shot. Maybe you could blow on Steve's neck, blow in his face. That might not take so much energy just to blow on him or lower the temperature around him. Make it feel a little bit colder. In fact, we've got something here on the table that takes the temperature. It says 180 at the moment. Maybe you could take that to 170. Do you think you can do that? Do you think you can change the temperature for me? Make it colder in here? Is there anyone else here? We've asked for Thomas and we've asked for the lady. Is there anyone else here that would like to come forward? Please try and knock one of those. Above Diane's head is a, is a candle, candelabra light. Up here? Yeah, with, the, um, with some little balls on there which when moved or touched will light up so if you'd like to touch one of those or all three at once would be absolutely fantastic i might be asking something there i think if you knock it i don't know if you touch it Look. yeah there you go so if you touch the candelabra it should register that you've actually touched it one or two or three of them will go off use my energy i'm stood the closest Use my energy to move those numbers down to point, point 0.3 further, to 17.5, one, one please. Sorry. What the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. You got two pieces. <laughs> oh, dear, dear me. Right. I think I need to give Steve a heart attack there. I think maybe. We go for a coffee break. Yes. Missing. Missing? The only thing that's missing here is some paranormal activity. <laughs> <laughs> We're back in a bit, folks. Have a bit of a coffee break. Bye bye. We all take a break for just over 30 minutes, but I set my camera up back in its original position and lock it in place. If you'd like to see that locked off camera footage whilst we're all downstairs, I could put it up as an extra. No editing, no texts, just as it is. Let me know in the comments, please. We are gonna go downstairs in five minutes. Unless you can make us stay up here by doing something for us. Banging. Tapping. Boat. Making a noise for us. Be quiet. Oh. Cheeky. Mona, be quiet if you make a noise for us. That sounds like walking downstairs. Oh, can you hear that? Doesn't it sound like walking yeah, downstairs? Yeah, footsteps. That three. Yeah. Hopefully my camera might pick something up. Mm. It's so like heavy boots, isn't it? Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Is there someone downstairs? Someone walking around? Big old thud from downstairs. Sound like a dog slamming.
Was that not you? Listening. Oh. All right then, folks. So last bit for tonight. We've come down to there, the ground floor. Uh, the, the John Bunyan room is at uh, is through there, um, and we've got like the mu rest of the museum uh, behind us here. Diane's uh, next to me here. What it was before, um, we were upstairs at a big old thud, uh, but previous to that, there was a couple of um, I think it was a Steve and Tony, mm -hmm. both heard uh, footsteps. Uh, like oh, I thought I heard them too. It sounded right, like right. three steps. I never heard them. I'm not saying these, these three didn't, of course, but you know, I was, I was probably busy chatting like I always do. But, um, what the hell? Oh, yeah. I think it's a police car with a head torch thing on. Oh, God's sakes. We might get interrupted here. Apparently the police have just showed up. With a searchlight on the side of it. Right. Did they not know paranormal investigators going here? <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. I wonder if they'd look without going right up to the windows so they could see my little police peepy there. So anyway, we'll see what happens next five minutes. I don't know if it's going to happen here, but I might get stopped by the police. Even though we have paid to be here. <laughs> Let's find out. So, folks, I'll just let you know what's going on here. Now the police have buggered off. I've got... Tony's in the uh, John Bunyan room with Mavis. Steve is... Uh, down in the uh, down in the cellar. <laughs> Don't you open that trap door? Because <laughs> there's Steve down there, <laughs> and um, and Diane is through here in the uh, in the museum and ex exhibition part of it. Waiting for the policeman. Waiting for the coppers to turn up by the door, so she can so, so we can sweet talk. <sighs> right, I'd like to call out to any spirits. In fact, no, I'm going to call out to the possibility of the spirit that actually made that bang noise before. If you are here, and you just have probably had a right good laugh, of it, laugh at us, then um, please come forward again knock on this door because we believe this is the door that actually was you know created a bit of a vacuum and it, and, it, and it banged or rattled but there is no wind outside at all it is like deadly still no pun intended That is a loud clock. He's a loud clock. So I'm going to ask, I'm hoping Steve can't hear me. Steve is sitting in the cellar. Has someone come in here? Yeah. Can they go there and touch him? Just so roughly touch him? Yeah. Can they go in there and touch him? Just so roughly his hair, touch his ear, or something like that. He's down in the cellar. Can you go do that for me? See if you can touch him. Make him feel really, really cold or really, really hot. Can you do that, please? See if you can make him jump. <sighs> All quiet down here. <laughs> Calm, peaceful and quiet. You got your K2 down there as well? Yeah, yeah, not a flicker yet. Let's just hope they create some bangs again before we go home. Yeah, 
Yeah, that was quite strange. Should I? Yeah. Like there. And I was sitting here and it looked pitch, pitch black. I couldn't see that reflective bit of light there. And now there's light there. So that was strange. Hmm. What was that? Oh. That's the little... That's Steve. Steve's laser trip. Just going to trip through it. But then there's light shining through. I don't think there's any additional light outside. Careful, I don't bang my head into the beams here. If there's anybody here that wants to make contact with me, please feel free to knock on this table or make any noise that you can. Speak to me. Or even you can touch me, or drop the temperature even. Perhaps you'd like to say your name. My name's Tony. Feel free to join me. Go and make some noise, have a little play, and let us know that you're here. It'd be nice to see you. Perhaps you'd like to hide down here if you were ever in trouble. Certainly not in trouble with us, put it that way. This is the third time we've been here now, so I like to think that we're that we're all friends now, all friends together. So there's no need to be shy, you can come forward any time. It's very calm, very still. Mm. There's no variation in temperature. Nothing, he's, he's calling out down there as well. Yeah, like I can say it just feels really cold on my right hand side. Icy cold, actually. But I don't feel weird or creepy or anything like that. Mm. Just cold. I'm going to try something. I'm just going to close this door a second. I want to see if I can get uh, the same kind of effect as it was before. It was strange because me and Tony walked towards it. It went. 
like it was the latch was down, but like there was like a massive suction. Yeah. On it. Right. So to just try and replicate what what we thought might have heard before. That's actually, you have to really give it some heave ho to get it to make that noise. I mean, if I just do it lightly, you don't get much of a, but it was quite a deep thud. And obviously that, uh, that latch. You have to give it some pressure to push it down. That's um, exactly it. That last one you done, that's exactly the noise main to bounding bird. Yeah. As I said, you would, the only way that could be replicated if there was some sort of like vacuum from another door or window open, I mean, there isn't anything open. No, there's nothing open. And I don't think that there's anywhere that a, a draft strong enough to create that. Right, I'm going to call out to the uh, to the entity, the energy, the spirit that may have done that. Could you uh, could you come forward, please, and try that again? Either knock on the door, push the door from the other side with the latch closed, or even from this side, move forward and try and click the latch open. Yeah, apparently it's Thomas that likes to open the door. Hmm. Yeah, we've heard from the curator that the uh, that the, the, this door is quite a, a bone of contention for the uh, for the the spirit of the boy that is uh, that is said to reside here. I know Thomas. You probably don't like doing things on demand. Who does? Who likes being told what to do? Definitely not a young boy, that's for sure. But if I can ask you, very sincerely, if you could make this door move in any way, or make a sound from this door, it would be hugely appreciated. And then we will leave you alone. Come on, Thomas. You can do it. You can make that door move. Even if it's just a little bit, just a tiny, tiny bit, so we can hear it. I keep thinking I can hear movement over there. I probably can't, it's probably in my imagination. Mm. Because did wasn't it until they changed that latch, they would find the door open all the time and it would set the alarm off. Uh, yeah, there's. Uh, and there's then a... they changed it to was it a, an iron latch? Yes. They've also got a mechanism on it there now because it is a fire door or fire exit door that um, it has the uh, uh, the pneumatic hinge on there. It's an electronic pneumatic hinge, so you just flick that switch above you to actually keep it held open. But if you want the door just to swing freely, you have to click that switch across again. Now, we had this, uh, we had this closed, it wasn't open, uh, the switch was off. Um, so it was in this position as you see it now. And um, I can't think of any, anything else which would have made that noise to be fair. So and, I, and I just want to point something out to you. You know, um, obviously we think the door was making a noise. Mm. And you know on your ghost app upstairs, what yep. was one of the words we kept getting? Scratch. Grandfather. Grandfather, yes, we did get that a lot. And it's next to the door. It is next to the door. Coincidence? That made the noise. <laughs> Who knows? Interesting. In, it's, an, it's an interesting coincidence, and I've, I've, got to be, I've got to be thinking, now I think of that, I've just got a chill going up my spine. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, they didn't say door, but no. grandfather kept coming up, and maybe it's because that's where the noise is coming from. I don't know. The grandfather's work, I know. It's because that's where the noise is coming from. I don't know. The grandfather's work, I know. 
strange. I just noticed that. Well, folks, um, well, I'm going to wrap this up for uh, for this evening. Um, well, the, the night. It's been uh, it's been a very interesting night here again. I mean, as far as I know, we haven't had a lot happen at all. Uh, but you know, it's still interesting to come here. I mean, I love this place. Uh, it's virtually on our doorstep, uh, about an hour away from where we mostly all live. So uh, great to come here again, um, and many thanks to Clive, the curator, and a big old shout out to the mm -hmm. Secret Coven which Diane is a uh, head of, hmm, the secret coven. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tabitha, eat your heart out. <laughs> um, right, on that note, folks, I shall see you next one, on the next one. Ta-da for a bit. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks, bye.